Are you looking for a project task list in Excel? Perhaps something just like this. Well, if that's the case, then you've come to the right place because in this video, I'm going to be showing you exactly how to create this project task list template from scratch. And the good news is it's very simple and easy to follow. You can also customize it to suit your specific needs. And I'll be making some recommendations for that along the way. Now, if you do want to save yourself a little bit of time, I have made this template available for instant download. So there will be a link in the description down below if you wanted to do that. That being said, I'm now going to create a new blank workbook and we can create this from scratch. So the first thing I'm doing is navigating to the bottom and I'm just renaming the sheet here and I'm calling it task list. At which point we are going to go to the top here and I'm going to be also adding a heading for this particular sheet. So again, task list, open up the home ribbon. I'm going to hit bold and I'm going to increase the font size to around 20. Now, I'm using Calibri. It's a great font. It looks very, very professional, but you can choose any font here to suit your needs. Just make sure you use that across the entire uh, workbook that you have here, just to keep that consistency. I'm now selecting A1 through to L2. Again, expanding the home ribbon, and I'm going to fill that with a slightly darker gray. Again, choose a color here that meets your particular needs. Okay, so I'm going to go with this one here. Now we're going to start building out the column headers. So what I'm going to showcase to you now are headers that work really, really well for a task list to ensure you capture the right types of data and can track your tasks accordingly. But again, you may need to pick and choose some of these. You may want some of these. You may want all of them. You may even want some on top of these. So just bear that in mind. So we've got project name that enables us to track tasks across different projects. If you're just working on one project, you could delete this off. Task name. We have description, so we can leave a description against each task. Assigned to, which is really useful if you've got multiple people working on your tasks. Priority, again for prioritization. Status. Deadline, so you can make sure that you, you meet deadlines for your different tasks. And notes, okay? What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over all of these, click home, I'm going to bold, and I'm also going to put them in the center. Now I'm going to select column B. I'm going to hold shift on my keyboard and go to I. So I'm selecting all of these eight columns. If I hover over the middle of one of these columns, you'll see this little icon here. Left click and expand that out to about here, just so that all of the column headers are visible. I'm going to make notes slightly larger and I'm also going to make descriptions slightly larger because that simply makes sense. Now what we're going to do is create a table. So I'm going to select B4 all the way through to, let's go down to I20. We're then going to click insert and we're going to click table. So insert table. Where is the data of your table? Now I've already selected those cells where the, the table is going to be held and that we're going to want to create it around. Select this. My table has headers because we've already put the heading names in and press OK. At which point you'll see it's created this table, but it's got some formatting that doesn't quite fit the, uh, the design we're looking for. So what we're going to do is click on table design at the top here. I'm going to rename the table to tasks. Just if we want to refer to this table at any point, particularly with formulas. And then what I'm going to do here is we can choose one of these. One of these out of the box might suit your particular needs. You can kind of choose any of these. But what I'm going to show you is how you can get formatting that just kind of works for you if they're not included here. So click new table style. In the name, I'm just going to call this task list and we're going to apply this to the whole table. So whole table, hit format. Now, what I want to do here is I want to add um, a border. So in the color, I'm going to choose like this one and I want this to be an outline and inside. So it's basically going to add the grid lines and nothing else. We don't want any fill or anything like that. It's literally just the border we're applying here. Press OK and press and let's do this as well. Set as default table style for this document. Okay. Now what you have to do is click on table design and press this drop down here and you'll see it here in custom. So we now have this as our design here. Now I'm going to select all of these and I will actually apply this lighter gray here like this. 
Now, if we were to remove the grid lines, so if you click on view, and click on grid lines, you'll see we've now got that nice look and feel if we don't have the grid lines on, but chances are you're going to want those on as you're working through this. So we've got this now in place. Now we just want to set up the priority and status. We want these to be drop downs, and basically you can only choose a couple of different options. So in order to do that, we're going to create a new tab and I'm going to call this key. It's the key, if you like. Now I'm going to select from A1, I'm going to go back into the task list and I'm going to select from A1 through to D2, press control C, go back into the key, select in A1 and press control V. And I'm just going to call this key. So essentially what I've done there is just copy across the formatting that we set up before. In here, I'm going to call this priority and in here, I'm going to call this status. I'm going to put this as a bold. So on the home ribbon, bold and make this a gray. And then underneath, we're going to set the different options. So we're going to have low, medium, high. Now you may want different priorities and status uh, than this. And you can do that, but these are the ones that simply make sense. So not started in progress and that you may want to leverage complete. And I'm also going to put one as no longer required because tasks sometimes, you know, we don't always need them after we think we do after a while. So what I could do here actually is I could go, I could go um, insert if I wanted to, you don't have to do this. You could do something like that. And then you could just choose that table design we created previously. It's, it's a little bit unnecessary actually, but if you want to keep the consistency in your file, then that's how you can do that. So now what we need to do is set up the conditional formatting. So what we can do here is not the conditional formatting, sorry, the data validation, excuse me. So we're going to select column F. Now this is a little trick that will save you a lot of time and will ensure that the drop down is applicable to every cell that will be created in this column. So except the ones we don't want. So select column F, we're then going to click data and then data validation and then data validation. In the allow, we're going to select list and in the source, so click in there, you can press this button and then click on key. You don't have to press that button, by the way, it just makes life a little bit easier. We're going to select from B5 through to B7. So it's saying equals look in the key sheet from this particular range. Press this button again, and press OK. Now you'll notice that every cell in here has that drop down. So it's really useful. But the only problem is, because we set it up in this way, it's every single cell, all the way down, infinitely. But the problem is we don't want that in here, or at least it doesn't look great to be in here. So if you select from F1 through to F4, then click Data, then click Data Validation, Data Validation, and just remove that. So click this drop down here and press any value and press OK. And it will be removed from those cells here that we don't want it on, but it will be in place for the others here. So now we have priority done. Now I just want to do status. So again, same process. Select column G, data, data validation, data validation, allow, list, source. We are going to click in here. And then I'm going to click left click from C5 all the way through to C8. Press OK. And again, all of our statuses are now in place. I do want to quickly remove them from here. So select from G1 through to G4, data, data validation, data validation, any. So there we have this. So if we want to have any other dropdowns, we could just add it to the key and then just go through that process. Just bear that in mind. So this is taking shape. We're getting very close to the end. But let's just say we want to run some analysis and want to understand where we currently are with our tasks. Well, the best way to do that is to create another sheet. So we're going to call this task overview. So this is an analysis sheet, if you like. And we can create some graphics, which we'll show you how to do in a second. So we'll call this task overview. Again, I'm just going to select from A1 through to E2 on the task list sheet. Press Control C, go back to task overview, go in A1, Control V, and we're going to call this task overview. And then what we're going to do here is we can go back into the task list at the bottom. I'm going to select, actually, let me put in some dummy data just so this works. And we can see it in action. So I'm literally just going to, let's just do that. And let's just put, so I'm just selecting different drop downs here, as you can see. 
And we need a few different. We'll do complete and then we'll do not started. So here we go. So what I'm now going to do, and this is what I recommend that you do, it saves having to use complicated formulas, is leverage pivot tables. So the way we can do this, we could select the whole table if you wanted to run some analysis on every single column. Or to make life easier, just select the columns that have the data you want to run the analysis on. So as an example, if I select from F4 all the way through to G12, we're just going to include the data in this particular range. So actually, it might make sense to do something like this. And then every time, you know, more information was populated in this sheet, you'll get picked up on. OK, so select this. You're going to go insert pivot table. Click existing worksheet and then in the location, make sure that's flashing like that and then go into task overview and select B4. Press OK and it's created our pivot table, in which case you'll see the, the data that can find within that range. We've got priority and status. And what we're going to do here is go priority in like that and then priority in like this. And you'll see it's an account of our priority based on the data that's held in that reference sheet. I'm going to select that drop down here and take out the blanks because we don't want blanks to appear. We're going to rename this to priority. And I'm also going to click on design. Click this drop down here and we can just put this in like some kind of nice. Uh, there we go. That works with our kind of style. What we can also do is we can pre Go from B4 through to C8, Control C. Let's do it down here and press Control V. And it's copied that across. Now, all we need to do is just manipulate this. So I've dragged status down. I'm removing priority and I'm going to remove that. And I'm just going to hit that in there. So we've got status, status. And so now we have a count of our statuses as well. So we've got, I'll just rename this to status. So we can see all of our different statuses and all of our different priorities. So this is where it gets really, really interesting. So what we can do is if I select from B5 all the way through to C7, so this little bit here, and then go insert, we can create some charts. So you can click some of these here, but recommended is just kind of expands it out and gives you all of the options. Now, the cluster column is going to work really, really well for this. I'm going to press OK and you'll see here that we have. We can just give this a title if we wanted to. Or we can remove it. If you don't want it, you can remove that chart title. But you'll see here we have high, low, medium. You can see it all visually displayed really, really well. And then what we can do is you can click on this little icon here. And you can change the style. So it could be you want it like that. It could be you want it to look like that. It could be like this. You've got loads of different styles to suit your particular needs. So just choose one accordingly. That might look quite nice. But I'm going to leave it at the default. The other thing you can do is this is really useful. If you click on this and then pivot chart options. No, not pivot chart options, sorry format chart area. Now what you can do is if you look here is you can start manipulating how this looks via this particular format chart area display on the right hand side. So we can do a lot here. So we can change. Yeah, we can change a lot of how this all appears. Now, one thing that I'm looking to achieve at this particular moment, let me just see if I can find it is I want it to be so that each of these appears in a slightly different color. So what I'm going to do is here we go. So what you want to do is select this. So select the different options, high, low, medium, and then vary colors by point. And in that way, you'll see that they all display in a different color. So just it's just much easier on the eye and it's much easier to understand. And then you can just go in and, and manipulate the, the theme colors here and you can change the color. So as an example, if you wanted high to be, let's just say you wanted high to be red, you just select high only and then select red. Let's just say low, we wanted that to be, you know, a light green and then a medium. We wanted to be a, you know, a, a subtle yellow. You could do it like that. Obviously, perhaps, perhaps not the best colors, but I'm just showing you how you could manipulate that to suit your needs.
okay? And then if you wanted to do status, you just do the same thing. So insert recommended charts. Let's go for the cluster column. Okay. Status. So that is how to create a task list in Excel is a great template that you can leverage. We could whack off the grid lines. Hopefully this video has been useful and you have what you need. Any questions, comments, feedback, drop them down below. With that said, best of luck, over to you, and I hope you have an excellent day.